Welcome back to the Michigan State Spartans dynasty. In year one, the Spartans put together an eight and five campaign, a huge improvement from last season. And headed into year two, we have a ton of stud redshirt freshmen that we just recruited. There's Tay Bickley, the three-star center, Enrique Vallejo, the four-star corner, Josh Westbrooks, the four-star right tackle, and Emmanuel Gideon, the four-star middle linebacker with 88 speed and 88 acceleration. Welcome back, gentlemen. This is the preseason of year two. Sadly, we lost our bowl game by one point last season, so we've got some goals to look forward to, but the Spartans are a three-and-a-half star program now, and the team looks a lot better with so much young, developing talent. All the players that we recruited are dogs. Not to mention, we added a lot of speed to the wide receiver room. As you can see right now, going into this season, our wide receivers are pretty solid, 80, 83, 84, but not a lot of speed. And since we have recently changed our offensive playbook to Auburn's spread, so it will be important that all these redshirt guys here next year are higher overalls and ready to play. 94, 96, 95, 95, 95. So we added a lot of speed. Nate Carter's going into his senior year. He's an 88 overall. Aiden Childs going into his junior year. He's an 86. But keep in mind, at all times, Aiden Childs does not like our playing style. We have a D playing style for him. So there's always this small chance that he's gonna hit the transfer portal. In case he does, we got John Dragos, who's redshirted right now. It's only a 69 overall, but he's really fast. 91 speed, 88 excel. He's got gold tier magician already. So that's kind of my backup option. We also have Malova. Milovocevic, Milovocevic, Alessio, Mil dude, this is the last time I recruit some kid out of Serbia. Alessio is also an option, but right now we got Aiden Childs. He's sticking around, no complaint. Defensively, I was most worried about middle linebackers. Devery Poe is already not that fast, and he's a senior, and that's exactly why we got Emmanuel Gideon. This dude will step into the starting role immediately in his first true year next year. I'm also ashamed to admit that I forgot about Darius Snow. Darius Snow is my favorite linebacker on Michigan State because he has 87 speed, 91 excel. This dude's a dog. But Wayne Matthews is a star player on my defense. So I think I'm gonna start Snow at left outside linebacker if the game will let me. Now the one bummer about College Football 25 is they don't really let you edit players that much. Here. So I'm moving Darius Snow to my starting left outside linebacker. The good news is Jordan Hall's an 82 overall and he's also a junior. So we'll get another year with him, but I want at least one year of usering Darius Snow because he's so fast. And the number one position that we need to recruit this year is D-tackles. Alex Van Sumeren, the junior, is our starter right now, but look at our depth at D-tackles. Not to mention we're running a four down lineman defense, which means not only my starter, but my backup D-tackle are in the game all the time. It's pitiful that our highest overall right now is the 70. Now the good news is I have set up my recruiting board for the 2025 season and there are some absolute monsters in there. First up, Hugh Schuler. Elusive back, he's leaning Michigan State right now. 91 speed, 92 acceleration. Would be an amazing immediate starter after Nate Carter leaves. Also looking at Greg Marshall, who's heavily interested in Michigan State. He's a four-star strong safe. Now, I am shooting for the stars this year. This would be my first ever True five-star recruit, Jaden Carraway. D-tackle out of Akron with 90 strength, 86 tackle, 83 acceleration. This guy's gonna be like an 80 overall right out of high school. Now I've thrown everything at him. I sent the house, I contacted his friends and family and he's leading Michigan State, but we're gonna have steep competition with Notre Dame and Penn State. So important that we send the house, so important that we schedule a visit and get Jaden Carraway. This guy would start next year immediately. I was also looking at Taylor Crook. He locked me out. He's going to Texas. Have fun, buddy. Whatever. There's also this four-star left end, Josh Wall. John Cantwell, elusive back athlete. Now, he's got the same stats as the other halfback we were looking at, but he's an athlete, which means potentially he could play a different position. I mean, you never know until you get in the offseason to see what their overalls are. I had that physical wide receiver, Andrew Foss, and he was a higher overall at free safe. So who knows? But I would love to get two five stars this year, Cantwell and Caraway. That's where I'm putting my energy. Also found a four-star gem, Larry Church, which means this guy's actually a five-star. Akeem Flanagan, a three-star center. 
Tanner Miller left, so we do want a new really good center. He's also a gem. Only other gems I found were Eric Hennessy, three-star right tackle, Bernie York, three-star athlete, and JP Fowler, four-star right end. So once again, my focal point for this recruiting class, defensive line, Nate Carter's replacement. And right now, I've got some awesome options for both of them, and they're all leaning Michigan State. So we just got to stay on top of this. And our first game this week is against Western Michigan. We're going to have a severe overall advantage. We're at home, and we're ranked 15th in the nation going into this game. So this should be a nice one for us. Taking a look at that Big Ten schedule, Western Michigan, North Texas, Boston College. Great start to the season. Then it's UCLA, USC, Iowa, Indiana. All should be tougher games. Then it's Penn State, Michigan back-to-back. -back. Nebraska, Minnesota, Maryland. But honestly, this is a cake schedule. We dodged Oregon and Ohio State. That is a beautiful thing in the Big Ten. I think the Big Ten championship is actually pretty realistic this season. And after a super hot start to the season for the Spartans, taking down Western Michigan, North Texas, and Boston College, the Spartans are 3-0, headed into their first Big Ten matchup against UCLA. Not to mention that the three-star gem right tackle, Eric Hennessy, already committed to Michigan State. No way. <laughs> Our first five-star recruit, John Cantwell, the five-star hatback. Dude, all we've done so far is sent the house and beat three bad teams. Ho, 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 ho. Look at what winning games will do for you, boys. Let's go. Flanagan, the three-star gem, also commits. But this UCLA game is going to be huge. I have two visits scheduled. With these recruits signing so quickly, we freed up so many hours we're still in the lead for Schuler. We're still in the lead for Greg Marshall. Jeremiah Humphreys, it's a close race with Ohio State, but this is our number one guy, Jaden Carraway, the five-star D tackle. A close race with Notre Dame in Kentucky. He's visiting for the upcoming game against UCLA. We gotta win that game. Taylor Crook has put us back in the running though. So there's two five-star D tackles that are technically possible. I'm also going to schedule him for UCLA. Larry Church, the four-star wide receiver, will also come in on this UCLA game. Now that I understand recruiting better, it's easy to see how overpowered this recruiter tree is. The fact that we could land multiple five-stars. We already got Cantwell, and we've got a good shot at Caraway. Probably Larry Church and maybe Taylor Crook would be gross, honestly. There's also four-star quarterback Joey Morrison. I've got hours. I'm sitting in the house. JP Fowler, the gem, four-star right end already has verbally committed to. Dude, this is actually OP. And I won't lie, it's really fun to do an in-depth rebuild like this. I have so much time to do everything perfectly. So it's our first Big Ten matchup. We're 3-0 and and we're fifth in the nation. I'm not gonna lie, that feels very aggressive. So ironically, we're 3-0 fifth in the nation, but we're 11th in the Big Ten because we just haven't played any Big Ten games yet. I'm happy that we're fifth in the nation. It just feels inflated, you know? Like one and one Georgia is sixth, but 3-0 Spartans are fifth. Happy to be undefeated. These Big Ten games is where it really counts. UCLA's an 80 overall. I thought they would be higher. We're an 85. Shit, this might be a beat down then. Dude, if we could have a big season here, and land all these four and five star recruits, it's gonna be MSU dynasty, true dynasty. I don't wanna get ahead of myself, but by year six, I think I want at least two natties. It's our first Big Ten matchup in year two, taking on the new Big Ten competitors, the UCLA Bruins. A few fans have flown in all the way from California. Spartan Stadium's looking beautiful. It's an early season game too, so the weather's still great in Michigan. It's a beautiful day for football. Spartans get seven on the opening drive, UCLA gets three. And on third and two, the Bruins are in the red zone. Let's see what the boys got here. Ooh, quick screen. That looks good. Damn, falls forward to the five. Let's see if the Spartans can get a goal line stand here. Two minute warning coming up. There's Wayne Matthews, our star outside linebacker. Shot to the end zone, UCLA takes the lead. It's 14 to 20, closing out the third quarter. We've got a big kick here and it's down the middle. We no longer have Jonathan Kim. I don't know who that is, but nice kick, buddy. It's Clem. Everybody knows Clem. Spartan casual over here. 17 to 20, this is a close ball game. For anyone wondering why I'm not playing, I just like to switch it up. It's fun to play, but it's fun to build your roster and let them go at it by themselves. And a UCLA read option looking good. And Demaricus Davis takes a huge hit. That was risky. We have 233 passing yards and negative three rushing. This is my first game watching the Auburn spread offense. I 
am concerned that it's not going to be utilizing Nate Carter. Maybe we're not ready for Auburn's spread. I switched from Michigan State's pro-style offense to Auburn spread, but we haven't really completed that rebuild yet. My wide receivers are too young. I think I got to go back to Michigan State's true offense. To have 88 overall Nate Carter and negative three rushing yards is depressing. Also, the center is inside of the guard. What is going to happen here? They fumbled! Oh my god! It's our ball! Yo, I've never seen that before. We just got bailed out by the sim. Wait, that was crazy. Hey, there's a handoff. Except it's not Nate Carter, it's McKinney Ware. Please don't tell me Nate Carter got injured again. Nate Carter might be the most injury prone player on this team. That makes me sad. There's another handoff McKinney Ware. And all of a sudden we've got positive rushing yards. Oh, I forgot that in college, if you get sacked, you lose rushing yards. That's probably why we have negative three. We're gonna run a jet sweep here and get bottled. Definitely need a score on this possession. Dude, Nate Carter got hurt again. He 100% did. This is also a massive game. We have two. Oh, huge throw. We have two. We have two five-star recruits visiting this week. First and 10. We got to get in the end zone here. Auburn spread. How are we looking? Hand off McKinney Ware. Breaking a tackle. McKinney Ware. Rolling to the three. Wait a minute. We do have Nate Carter. Why on earth is Nate Carter not taking those reps? He's one of the best halfbacks in the nation right now. First and goal, Aiden Childs, almost a fumble. Moving the wrong way right now on the goal line. Second and goal, Aiden Childs finds a man wide open. Nick Marsh. Nick Marsh went invisible. He's invisible. Martin's back on top. The sophomore, Nick Marsh. Look at that. Beautiful execution on that play. UCLA's got to get in the end zone on this final drive. Our recruits are watching anxiously as we get a huge sack. Van Sumeren gets home. I was talking shit about Van Sumeren, saying he's only a 75 overall. To make me eat my words, second and 20. More good pass rush and even better pass defense. Nice work. Third and 20. UCLA is backed up to the wall. Oh, big blitz. It leaves the middle open. That was a risky blitz. Timeout UCLA. Uh-oh, they're on the 27. Come on, boys, we're at home. Good pass rush. He got that pass off. Ooh, Adam Fontana just got injured. That was our backup D tackle. See, we're already shallow. Second and three. Laser beam. Uh-oh. Look at the stadium, Paul. Spartan Stadium is loud, but we're nervous too. It's first and goal. UCLA, he's dropping back. He's scrambling. He's got the easiest lane for a touchdown. We need a massive drive out of the Spartans to either tie this game up, go into OT with a field goal, or win it. 44 seconds and two timeouts. I don't think we land the five stars if we don't win this visit. There was a marginal boost for the win. Ooh, good kick return though. There was a marginal boost for the win, but a big decrease on the loss. I need Aiden Childs, Nate Carter, and everybody on this team to step up big right now. Aiden Childs finds the edge, caught. We have to burn a timeout because that's not a first down. Come on, we just got to get in field goal range, boys. 35 seconds, second and one. Hey, the new offense was built for this, though. Childs is sacked. That was the worst case scenario right there. We just burnt our last timeout. We have to get a first right here. Third and seven, hold line. Where are we throwing? Oh my God, and he's inbounds. Fourth and six, this could be the game right here. This will be a really big setback. In Childs can't even get the ball off. What on earth are we doing, gentlemen? That was his poor execution and a frustrating loss for the Spartans. That, that sucked. Honestly, that sucked. That is such a big loss right there. Our first loss coming to the Bruins. That was our game to win. We had the lead with a minute 30 left. Also, not going to lie, I got to go back to Michigan State's offense. 24 for 34, three and two interceptions. And we're hardly getting the ball to Nate Carter. I can't run this offense. It worked in those first three games. We got those wins against not so great opponents. Really bad loss there. I'd be shocked if we get in our commits now. Apparently Hugh Schuler didn't care that much. This was the athlete gem. He had a visit for UCLA. Jeremiah Humphreys was his three-star gem. He wasn't too bothered. York was a three-star gem athlete. But the number one guy, Jaden Caraway. This was the number one guy I was looking for. Caraway committed to Kentucky because we lost that game. I understand. I would have too. Jaden Caraway commits. Although, we technically still have a shot at Taylor Crook. He already came in for the visit. 
The visit did not go well. We're gonna have to hard sell him here. It's still possible to get him though, because our hard sell is gonna be really competitive. Playing time championship contender and Brandon. This is a really good hard sell, and we'll have just enough minutes to DM him as well. This is our last shot at landing a super good D tackle. Otherwise, we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and look at some three stars. Let's get these commits off the board that have gone elsewhere. And let's go find a few more D tackles that are worth recruiting. Yeah, there's only a single three star left that we could maybe land. Well, no, these guys are open still. All right, well, we've got a lot of hours. Added some, uh, added some D tackles to our board. Let's scout these guys up. Arius Raymond is a gem. Three star D tackle. McGloster is a Busted gem four star. Baker looks standard. Aries Raymond, we're on his list. We'll offer him the scholarship, send the house, and we're gonna contact friends and family. Gonna give him the biggest push that we can. And then Demarcus Baker, same exact thing. He's a true four star. Tough loss there. And I'm going back to scheme and playbook. I cannot have Nate Carter getting five touches. That's just pitiful. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We were solid last year and we're still rebuilding the team. I'm going back to Michigan State's offense. I think when this team is fully revamped with crazy wide receivers and tight ends, maybe we'll switch again. But I just can't watch Nate Carter not get them. I'm gonna sim USC and Iowa and I'll take over for our next ranked opponent, the Indiana Hoosiers. Taylor Crook. Oh, we were actually so close. That hard sell was almost enough, but Taylor Crook. Oh, we were so close. Taylor Crook goes to Texas, which means our eggs are now in the basket of Aries Raymond, who loves Michigan State right now, and Demarcus Baker. McGloyster I can remove since he's a busted gem, and we can put some time on Venzel Hall. Pretty damn slow. He does not look messy, but beggars can't be choosers. I'll add a few more targets as well. I'm gonna sort by rank, see if anybody's truly possible here. Joey Morrison still really likes Michigan State. I'd love to pick him up still. Four-star right tackle, four-star tight end, and a four-star middle linebacker added to our board. All these guys look really good, and there's... Got a lot of hours freed up. Let's send the house of these guys. And then we're really keeping our eyes on Joey Morrison. Four-star quarterback. I'm going to schedule him a visit against Penn State. That's going to be a really big game. We'll give him the trophy tour since that's an A+. I'm not even going to lie. I'm actually going to recruit a three-star fullback too. <laughs> It'll work good in our offense. It really will. We dropped our game against USC. Let's see how we fare against 2-2 two and two Iowa back in Michigan State's playbook, really hoping this game's a win. Oh my God, we just lost three straight. 3-0 three to start the season. We're 0-3 in the Big Ten. We've lost every Big Ten game. We're gonna close this out here against Indiana. I have to win this game. I don't know if that we can go to the Big Ten Championship at all anymore. Wisconsin and Ohio State are undefeated, and we don't have either of them on the schedule. Yikes. Oh, this is not good. This was easier when we were winning games. Yikes. 85 overall taken on an 80. I'm gonna play the moments. Let's beat the Hoosiers. We're headed to Bloomington, Indiana for an away game against the Hoosiers. Looking for our first Big Ten win. The Spartans were ranked fifth in the nation. Now we're unranked after just three weeks of football. Let's get back on track here. Gonna throw this one into Smith, who's gonna break a tackle. I like play action scissors here because Nate Carter's a threat and Jack Velling has the best route on this and he's our best player and there's Jack Velling. That's exactly what I wanted. Jack Velling down the sideline. Star safety from Indiana makes a good tackle right there. And this is why we went back to Michigan State's offense, baby, to run the ball with Nate Carter and he's off to the races and we just gotta hold it. Discipline, gentlemen, discipline. Hey, it don't matter to me. I'm still handing this ball off to Nate Carter. Gotta wait for that block. Nice work. We'll take a few yards after the penalty. Now it's second and 11. Looking to score on this opening drive. There's Nate Carter. Too easy, baby. Third and one. Going right back to power O for one yard. Third and one, those blocks look beautiful. Play action slide on first and 10. Oh, they're on me fast, but I should be able to get this out. Paracheck, the backup tight end. Gun motion replace. If this is man coverage, I really like Jack Velling. I think that is man coverage. It's not. But right in the middle, it's a risky pass, but it's caught. Third and, that makes it first and goal. Read option here. Let's see if he bites. He bites. He bites! Aiden Childs on the read option into the end zone. It feels good to be behind the helm. It was tough to sit and watch as we lost to UCLA. I so badly wanted to step in and win that game, but it just didn't feel right. I wanted to earn it. Now it's third and seven. We got the ball back already, and Jack Velling doing Jack Velling 
things, but Aiden Childs just out of reach. Defense needs a hand. Where's Snow? Where's my boy Snow? Oh no, I'm player locked. I hate when it does this. Every once in a while, you just get stuck on a player and it won't let you switch until the ball's thrown. Wayne Matthews gets a big hit, but for the rest of this, these drives on defense, I will be stuck on Thompson. I'm not kidding at all. There's nothing I can do about it. This is, oh, it's not a handoff. Definitely expected a handoff. He throws low, huge hit, but that's first and goal. Honestly, I'm not gonna sit here stuck on a player. I'm just gonna watch. Definitely my least favorite bug right now in this game. I just wanna be on a linebacker. I wanna fill that gap. Wayne Matthews does it though, nice work. Two minute warning, goal line set. They're in heavy. We can stuff this. Michigan State's goal line defense is immaculate. We're gonna prove it right here. There's the handoff. Hey! One more stop. One more stop, boys. Let's force a field goal. They've got an inch to go. Same exact play. He dives over the middle. Nice touchdown for the Hoosiers. All right, two-minute drill here. Let's go see if we can put some points on the board. First and 10. Childs is going to get out, and... I was about to say Nate Carter's available, but we'll just take those yards. All white uniforms looking clean on the Spartans right now. First and 10. There's Nate Carter, wide open. Yes, he's gonna take off, get a spin, stay on his feet. Here's a great deep yardage play, double post. See if anybody clears out there. Oh, Jack Velling was there. Second and 10 for the Spartans. Jack Velling, ooh. I'm leading these balls too aggressively. That's why they're out of reach. How's third and 10? I'm gonna switch this play up a little bit. Nate Carter's got the corner. That linebacker in man coverage doesn't have a chance. Got to get some points up before half. Almost under a minute, first and 10. Is he manned up on Nate Carter? That's <laughs> such a bummer. It's not Nate Carter! It's McKinney Ware! That's just such a hard route to cover. Maybe we give someone a shot here on first and 10. Uh-oh, pockets collapsing. Oh, good block pickups! Aiden Childs, motion B over! <laughs> I playmaker B which forced that corner to follow him and he couldn't make the tackle anymore. 14 to seven, we gotta get a stop. Can I switch players? I can't switch players. It's Thompson, Thompson, me and you buddy. Me and you against the world here. See how my D-line user skills are. They're shit, if you can't tell. See, like if I was a linebacker, I could at least try to make a play there. It's 14 to 14 still. And I'm stuck on this fraud. Please, please let me switch. Let me switch to anyone. Ugh. Finally, let me switch. Hey, that's a stop though. That's fourth and two. They're gonna kick a field goal. No, they're going for it. Indiana got a field goal out of that. It's first and goal, and they are giving me probably the easiest look I'm ever gonna get. Nate Carter to the edge. Come on, baby. Yeah, take a better angle. Indiana scores on their drive. It's 21 to 24. So a touchdown wins it, a field goal ties it up, and I dare somebody to guard Jack Velling in man coverage. 67 yards for Velling, and I might just hit him again. If they got the balls to run that same defense, they got the balls to run that same defense. My friends, it's gonna be a long night you keep doing that. I say that, but it's not gonna be a long night. There's not a lot of time left. Two on the clock here. Jack Velling, single coverage. Is that a dot? <gasps> Giles! Oh, that's gotta be a perfect ball. You have to hit that. Second and 10. There's Nate Carter over the middle. Very well pass led. Damn it, Aiden Giles. You know, ironically, this might be better. So we can burn some clock off before we score. I had Y, but I just wanna do this. Let's take five yards and burn some clock. Since I can't play on defense effectively anyway, let's try and score with no time left. So this is a lot riskier. But on second and five, we're going to counter to Nate Carter with God tier block. First and goal, let's pull a little bit more off that clock. Nate Carter, huge play right there. Indiana is not using their timeouts. We're gonna take this under 40 seconds, get on the right side. If I can put this ball planted on the one. Okay. Not exactly what I wanted. Indiana is not using their timeouts. 20 seconds on the clock. There's the snap. Nate Carter breaks a tackle, breaks another. We're on the one. I'm using a timeout. Now I'm nervous. No, we did this right. We did exactly what we were supposed to do, gentlemen. Let's widen out, see if we can get them in a non-goal line set. This is a non-goal line set inside zone. Nate Carter, you can't make it much easier for the Spartans here. Third and goal. Great blocks. Carter 
is in. Spartans take the lead with 14 seconds. They have all three timeouts, but I'm stuck on Thompson, bro. I'm gonna go play back. I know that we should be pass rushing, but I just can't watch them bomb us. It's gonna hurt too bad to watch. He checks down. Hello? Indiana, what on earth are we doing there? Please, Thompson, Thompson, get back. Oh no, please don't throw it up to number three. Okay, okay. One second left. Okay, I'm on Hall now. So I've technically switched to a different guy. They're an actual Hail Mary. Who am I on? Oh my God, they just checked the ball. Did somebody tell Indiana what it means to win a ball game? What on earth were those plays? Indiana fans, I'm very sorry for what you just had to witness. But the Spartans get their first Big Ten victory of the season. Hopefully, this is a sign of things to come. Praying that we're back on track here. Aiden Childs with a great game. Nate Carter was incredible. I think he had 90 yards on the ground, had at least one rushing touchdown. Aiden Childs had one as well. That was a nasty celebration. Spartans get a huge victory. Need it. And this is what I like to see out of our staff. I like this so much better. Aiden Childs, 252. Nate Carter, 14 attempts, 86 yards and two touchdowns. Aiden Childs, two rushing touchdowns. I like that a lot better. And yeah, I mean, we're not really utilizing our wide receivers that much. Jalen Smith had three. Nick Marsh had three. Velling had three for 89. This is what I want Michigan State's offense to look like. So sorry, Auburn spread, but that might be a year four thing. All right, huge victory for the Spartans, and that puts us at halfway of season two. Before I sign out, I gotta check in on these recruits. We lost Greg Marshall to Kentucky. NM Kapali looks like he's leaning Wisconsin. I'm gonna give him a hard sell, and he does have a visit scheduled against Penn State, so if he sticks around long enough, maybe we can steal him. Give him a really good hard sell there. Emika NM Kapali. Four-star right end Jermaine Meeks is pretty damn close, and I have not been sending the house at him, so let's see if we can poach him. Joey Morrison's the number one guy I still want to land. Um, Four-star field general quarterback. I'm going to hard sell him. And then he's also scheduled to visit for the Penn State. So that'll be our first game of next episode. I got to win. That. Aries Raymond, the three-star gem, loves Michigan State. Venzel Hall, the three-star D-tackle. So we have good backup D-tackle options. Austin Pow does not look like he's coming home with us. Javon Brown likes us. Kenny Lemur likes us. Okay. All right, let's get a little preview of what next episode's gonna entail. Joey Morrison commits. The hard sell was all that was needed for Joey Morrison. Okay, amazing. Four-star quarterback, field general. If Aiden Childs transfers, that's my number one guy right now. Assuming he's decent. We, we haven't seen his stats yet, but that's really good. Next game here is against Penn State. They're four and three. We're four and three, and I have two visits scheduled for this game. Last time I scheduled some visits, we lost to UCLA. We are not looking good in the Big Ten right now. Ohio State, Wisconsin still undefeated in the Big Ten. My odds at a Big Ten championship are very low, but we do have Michigan on the schedule, Maryland on the schedule, Nebraska on the schedule, and now Penn State. Even if we swept, I mean, we'd end the season four and three or five and three. Wisconsin, Ohio State would have to start losing games. That's my shot at the Big Ten champ. I do have some points though, so let's load up Tactician. I'd like to make my quarterback as good as possible. So I'll put one point there, and let's also put a boost on our defensive line. D-line is so good in college football all right, gentlemen, that's it for today's episode. Some of the best recruiting we've ever done, but we're not winning the games we should be right now. Penn State's on the clock. We've still got to play Michigan right after them, too. I'll see you boys in that one. Peace.